Welcome to Book Trip After Dark, your go-to for the latest in sensual reads and scintillating giveaways. Today, we are thrilled to have USA Today and New York Times bestselling author Heather Graham here with us. Thanks so much for joining us, Heather. Uh oh, oh. Well we lost her. Oh, there she is. She's back. <laughs> you you would disappear for a minute, but you're back. Okay. Um, so it's so lovely to have you here. And today, uh, Heather's going to be discussing her 1001 Dark Nights novella, When Irish Eyes Are Haunting. Um, before we begin our questions, I want to let our viewers know that we will be giving away a mystery bag full of the author's favorite things. So stop by booktrip.com after the live chat and enter to win. So without further ado, uh, let's chat more about When Irish Eyes Are Haunting. Um, um, Heather, can you tell us a little bit more a about it? For me. My mom was born in Dublin and... Uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day was always one of the biggest holidays in our family. It kind of superseded birthdays and all other things. Uh, so this is about a cast of characters that we've already met. Cool. Uh, they've been in a previous crew of Hunter's book. Um, and they mm -hmm. take off to Ireland because of bad things happening to a relative. And is a castle haunted or uh, are people yeah. actually doing these things and using old legends such as the Banshee and that type thing to create murder and mayhem. Cool. Awesome. Now, Shelly has a question. Um, she says, you're back for another year in the 1001 Dark Knight series. Uh, she says, are you reading any other books in the series? Um, do you ever there read the other author's work? There are three of them that will be coming out this summer. And the three that are coming out this summer are, I'm trying to, trying to see if I can remember them in order. The Silenced, The Forgotten, and The Hidden. And they're all in the Crew of Hunter series. Yeah. Ah. Awesome. Um, so Chelsea has a question. Um, she says, hi, Heather. Thanks for coming to chat. And she says, when did you know you wanted to be a writer, and how did you um, go I always about loved pursuing books. your dream? I was very lucky. I had two parents who read constantly. And uh, I think... I, and actually, I think that's everybody I know who's writing mm -hmm. now. They just love books. Um, and then, actually, when I was in college, I majored in yeah. theater arts. And when I got out of college, I did some dinner theater, some backup work, some commercials. I got a super commercial that my dog was in and got paid more than me. Um, cool. And then when we had, uh, actually, when we had the child who just had the child, oh. I started staying home because it was actually far more expensive to go to work than it was mm -hmm. to stay home. And that was when I started uh, trying to write, mm -hmm. or writing, I guess if we're writing, we're actually doing it, but um, trying to write for publication. Right. And I started sending things off all over the place. First two things I sold were actually short horror stories to mm -hmm. Black Cat Magazine and Twilight Magazine, and then I sold my first book to Dell. after a lot of trial and tribulation. Awesome. Now... Uh you love to write, you know, um, horror and paranormal. Um, what kind of draws you to that? Um, what, what first you got I you interested in that? I think it's something genre? that I always loved. I remember, well, I mean, first of all, possibly going along with the, um, what the, the theme of this book actually is I stayed with a great grandmother frequently when I was young who, um, was just full of all the old legends and she could tell the mm -hmm. best stories I've ever heard. But she also had a way with us of um, when, uh, if she thought that my sister and I were misbehaving or a couple of my cousins who might be around at the time, she would always threaten us with, uh, if, uh, if we weren't behaving, the banshees be getting us in the outhouse. And it was kind of like she did it so well. Um, we were like 17 and 18, 19 <laughs> yeah. when we figured out, wow, we didn't even have an outhouse, but she managed to make that threat work. But they, she was just, um, oh, that's so funny. I think a whole family, they were a great mm -hmm. family for storytelling, and they usually had some type of a ghost or supernatural character in it. Mm -hmm. and then there were Hammer Films, I love Hammer Films. Right, and, uh, yeah, um, I got to tell you, I, I've been to Ireland a couple times, and the first time that I went, we visited Sligo and Leitrim, and we went to, that's like where our ancestors are from. We drove all the way out in the country. I didn't know where we were going, and it was a surprise. My mother surprised us, and we stayed in a castle, and it was creepy and amazing. <laughs> so I can only imagine, you know. They definitely have it was it was fantastic. Pardon me. So have you um have you been there? Oh yeah. 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 
have you been there? Have you traveled there? Do you ever like, yeah, I'm sure you love it. It's, it's a fabulous it's country, beautiful. wonderful country. And um, just, just very, very yes. wonderful, warm, crazy people too. Just, um, I, I, I truly love my family and my mom to death. So yeah. It's good. Yeah. That's great. Um, now we have a question about social media and just your connection with readers. Um, Billy wants to know, has social media helped you to connect with readers? Um, are you active on things like Twitter I'm and Facebook? Most, um, that's a good question. I'm most active on Facebook and I have two pages. And um, I, I'm kind of in a little bit of a difficult situation now because the one is the one where you're going to see a lot of pictures of my cats, my dogs, little nephews and nieces, my children, and of course the brand new baby. Nice. Um, and the other one I, I kind of always thought people wanted to be like more mm -hmm. just, you know, kind of like the books, ma'am, just the books. But uh, I will, I'm not sure if that should be the way it's done. I'm thinking maybe <laughs> I ought to be trying to be on the um, actual books just the books page um, a little more often than I am. I, I do, I, mm -hmm. I'm a fan of Facebook. I have a good time with Facebook and I love to keep up with people on it. I have, um, it's funny, speaking of which, I had a cousin I hadn't seen in years and finally yeah. connected with on Facebook. So a lot of good things can come from it. Um, I'm not great at, at oh, Twitter. Awesome. Twitter. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not a good Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's totally different. It takes some getting used to for sure. Um, Chelsea has an interesting question. She says, uh, "What has been your sorry, proudest what moment as an author?" Chelsea wants to know what has been your proudest moment. Um, as an author? I was incredibly lucky to go on a USO tour with uh, international thriller writers, and um, oh wow, we went to see. We went to see servicemen at Walter Reed, and we went to a military hospital at Romstadt, and we went to Kuwait and a lot of other places. And I think wow. the joy that many people had just to have people caring, you know, people there to try to uh, either bring them books, give them books, or uh, the one hospital room we went into, there was a young man waiting for us who wanted to be an author, and so he was waiting to speak with us. And I, I don't think I've, I've ever felt happier about what I do than when oh, I was wow. able to kind of at least give a little drop of something to someone who's done so much for us. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Um, now, you mentioned um, thriller writers, um, and Dee has a question about Thriller Fest. Uh, she says, how important do you think it is uh, for authors to get an agent? And she's, she knows I that you attended I do. I have year. attended every uh, International Thriller Writers Conference there has been. I love it. Um, it's really wonderful. The, you know, the probably most prestigious authors one could possibly know show up at Thriller Writers, and they're accessible, they're kind, they're yeah. giving, um, very wonderful. And as far as um, going, if you're looking for an agent, I think it's brilliant because they have a pitch fest with agents, and um, I could not recommend it more for somebody. Oh, it's wow. It can be kind of tough because it's, it's, uh, it's an expensive conference, but there's so much provided um, for uh, it's really, it's really, this sounds kind of funny when you think about conferences, but it's an amazing uh, bang for the buck kind of thing because it's just so well done. It's very well done. Amazing. Um, now, Dee has a question about some of the characters that return in uh, when the Irish eyes are haunting. Um, and she says, in your latest book, um, Devin and Craig Return, will there be another book You're featuring them? <laughs> uh, I never say never. <laughs> I, um, and I'm how. embarrassed to say I forgot because another mm -hmm. couple of characters will be coming back for, um, for Halloween. And I have forgotten which characters they are. But I have, uh, right. I have a great time bringing characters back because it's always kind of, um, as far as a crew of Hunter series go, the way that it's structured, we do get two new agents every time, but it's kind of like you don't really want to just leave them. Um, so I really love to let them have right. some extended 
life and fun in the Thousand and One Dark Nights. And I'm, you know, I'm very much so hoping they, the readers enjoy them and they do well. Yeah. Now, what are you currently working on? Uh, at this anything, particular perhaps? moment, actually, I'm, <laughs> I am doing some rewrites on the Crew of Hunters series. It is coming out this summer. Um, and also, um, out soon is a book called mm -hmm. um, The Dead Play On, and that's in another series, Cafferty and Quinn. Cafferty and Quinn will probably be making some appearances in A Thousand and One Dark Nights, too. Um, they, uh, they're they they're out of New Orleans. Uh, awesome. Their series runs with just the two of them, and, and The Dead Play On is part of their series. It follows Waking the mm -hmm. Dead. And before that, it was Let the Dead Sleep. <laughs> so now they're awake and playing. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I enjoy them. They're very, ah. very fun characters to work <laughs> with. And uh, so they'll, they'll probably be making an appearance. But I've also, for 2016, written a straight suspense, which will come out in, mm -hmm. I believe, April of 2016. Oh. Oh, great. That's a bunch of stuff to look forward to. It's amazing. Now, Bren wants to know, who are some authors that you look up to? Is oh, there anybody that comes to oh, mind? So many. When you think of your favorite, um, and, favorite and author. And not necessarily what I do. <laughs> I have, to me, I think one of the finest, most giving authors I've ever met, uh, met is uh, uh, R.L. Stein, Robert Stein. Uh, he's an amazing person, has entertained young people for generations and continues to give and is the epitome of a class act as far as I'm concerned. Um, Lee Childs is an amazing man. Linda Fair, uh, Linda, cool. I just, Linda Fairstein, uh, fine, fine author and human being. And yeah. I guess it's funny because I do go to Thriller Fest and I go to so many others. You do have a tendency to see writing that you love yeah. with a person you find to be amazing as well. Uh, so those are a couple of people. I mean, some of the others I really love um, we're mm -hmm. not going to meet. One is Edgar Allan Poe. One is Dickens, you know. So those are a couple. It's a little bit difficult. Yeah. Were you fans of them before it you was. met them? I'm it's sure too, it was surreal meeting them. One of my and favorite books of all time same, yeah. is called The Keep, and it's by an author yeah. named F. Paul Wilson. And I love that book. And then at a, um, mm -hmm. a marketing event one time, it was Authors at Sea. Uh, he happened to be at the table next to mine. And it was really cute because my whole family was lined up waiting to, you know, meet him. Oh, wow. And we're all kind of like, wow, I'm really sitting next to him. And, and he has proven to mm -hmm. be a, um, a great friend. And I still love his writing. Wow. Now, um, in terms of your writing process, Chelsea asks, how many hours per day do you write? Do you have like a set schedule or are you kind of seat of your pants writer? You know, do you do you plot? I usually like? write every day. Um, this is not necessarily every day. When things happen, things happen and you're doing something else. The day I got here and got to right. see my grandson for the first time, mm -hmm. I did not write. <laughs> I just... I. But you know, I heard an interesting statement earlier today. It's kind of like writing is not always at the keyboard because most of us have thought about what we're doing for a long time and yeah. often done a great deal of research about what we're doing for a long time. So, I mean, that, that kind of plays into it too. But as far as um, writing, um, I really do almost every day. And, and I, I, I have five children and they grew up with it and they were very little when I started. And two of them weren't even born when I had started. And I really am so grateful for them because I got used to them playing in the room. I got used to all the things that they were doing. And now I feel like I am a Dr. Seuss book. Like I can write in a car. I can write going far in a plane or on a train. <laughs> like no, there's no amount of person that kind of can knock me out of it. So I'm very That's grateful amazing. to them for that. Wow. <laughs> if you need writing advice, you just fill the room with children and <laughs> you can write in anything and write in a storm. <laughs> it's That's your awesome. trouble. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, no, Shelley wants to know, do you have any advice for writers looking to get published? Uh, what should they not do while pursuing a book deal? Um, I think a lot of the time it's uh, common courtesy. Look up wherever you're trying to publish. Go online and look up what all of their definite, you know, what their requirements and, and definitions are. Um, there, a lot of them go by, you know, to please send a query letter, to then send the book and some chapters, or you know, whatever it is that they ask you to do. And most of the time, when I'm speaking with agents and editors, they'll tell you um, that you know, if you don't hear from us in six to eight weeks, you know, say, oh, please drop another line, make sure that it's gotten through. So just, I mean, be smart. You don't want to, you know, a year later say, gee, nobody got back to me. But be smart and courteous about when you get back to them. I do, honest to God, they, they didn't have them when I was starting out, or they might have had a few that I didn't know about. Conferences are wonderful, local ones, if you know, if you don't want to travel far. Um, but you get to meet people, you get to meet editors and agents. And it's funny because I just, we have, um, there's a group down in South Florida that I'm with, and we just had a cruise with your muse. Uh, God, I can't talk today. I know what's wrong. Cruise with your muse, where we all went off on a cruise ship, and it was wonderful. We had editors from Pocket and Kensington and all oh, over, cool. and um, uh, they were all as nice as can be. So I think almost everyone that they spoke to will be sending something into them, and because they did meet and get to see each other on the cruise, they will hopefully really truly be getting to it. So I, I do recommend that, and then if you can't get to a conference, yeah. I really recommend that you do your homework and look up what every editor is looking for, uh, and then make sure that you send it the way that they want it sent. So I think that, and uh, like the editors will tell you when, when they're speaking at different mm -hmm. conventions, um, you know, don't send us a young adult if it tells you on our site we don't do young adult. So a lot of it is just really being smart and common sense and then being courteous too. Exactly. There's nothing like meeting someone. Yeah. Sorry? Are there any conferences? Right. Are there any conferences that you would recommend? Um, God. Um, <laughs> I love all of them. So, yes, let's see. I recommend. I have a conference myself I would love to recommend. I, I've, uh, the, year, the year right after the storms, I was asked by friends in New Orleans if I could do anything. So we have a benefit conference every year now. This will be our 10th year for New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And it will be Labor Day weekend for anybody. And we are completely at cost. Oh. All you do is pay for your food. And it's a very reasonable, uh, I think it's I think oh, it's cool. 255 or something like that. But it includes two breakfasts, a dinner, a party, a couple parties, dinner theater, can, and uh, lots of great panelists. So uh, anybody who would like to be interested in that one, please look it up. It is writersforneworleans.com. Uh, other than that, uh, again, I love thriller writers. I go to thriller writers every year. I go to romantic times every year. Um, have, have a great party at romantic times if y'all want to join yes. me. And let's see, just came from Sleuth Fest, which is South Florida mystery writers. <laughs> I love that one. I love Voucher Kong, um, which is another mystery. Cool. Uh, oh my God, I could go on forever. I I do highly mm -hmm. recommend cons, and it just there's so many small ones too. I think for a lot, uh, um, a lot of people, and one that I've done a couple times, and I double committed, or I would be there this year. Romcon, it's out in uh, Colorado, and it's just yeah. great. There, mm. you kind of get both things. You do a lot of playing. There's an you and an author of your choice, maybe figuring out what to do with their characters for the zombie apocalypse in a game. Um, and, and then you, you might be taking some workshops, you might be doing all oh. kinds of things, but it's a really warm, wonderful conference. So I recommend that. But I mean, honest to God, look them up. There's great stuff going on almost everywhere, almost every weekend. I know I've missed something yeah. big, but I... <laughs> wow. I love um, horror writers too. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, it sounds like a party. <laughs> yeah. Um, a question just popped up from Gwen, and she says, "Will you be? Will you soon be adding to your dust I to am dust series?" I'm trying very hard to add to <laughs> dust to dust, and I am. I, I guess I'll explain. They decided. You're, I I write on contract with uh, with Mira, and they're wonderful, lovely people. Mm -hmm. I adore where I work, but they had wanted to go in a different direction. Um, so at some point. Um, <laughs> 
I am trying very hard to create ashes to ashes to, and I will have to put it out myself and therefore have it available for the people who have been kind enough to ask about it. So I am hoping to. Yeah. Awesome. Um, now, Billy has a question. How much of your writing is drawn from people that you know or Most experiences right. you've had? Um, other than the fact that I don't really know any vampires, and I'm sad to say that, like, Thomas Jefferson hasn't gotten up and spoken to me or anything. But uh, the, what, I'm blanking on the title right now, but one in particular, <laughs> my second son is very good friends with a remarkably talented young woman who um, is a fabricator with uh, Legacy mm -hmm. Studios, which is the old Stan Winston Studios. And we were out in California visiting her, and she took us through the studios. Mm -hmm. And I was just amazed because you'll see something like this wonderful, cute pig used in a commercial next to a totally decaying, rotting body. You know, but it is um, just all these wonderful things that, that people create <laughs> for advertisements, for the movies, for television shows. And uh, she, I definitely used her um, in the nicest way, I hope. I like her very much. She's a great kid. Uh, just uh, so many people that I have come across were uh, at Thriller Writers too. Another thing that they offer to us is once a year we go into the FBI offices in New York City for a day uh, and and get to stay there. I've had um, I've, I've also I've had the opportunity to do some oh, wow. very great things because the things kind of kind of snowball. We recently had a conference in Key West called Key West Mystery Fest, yeah. and the lovely young woman who interviewed me for that used to work for uh -huh. Mel Fisher, and so I went out on Mel Fisher's, uh, one of his uh, boats that's working on the Atosha site, the Bank of Spain site. Yeah, so I got to do that. Nice. I've had a seance at the House of the Seven Gables. I've spent a weekend at the Myrtles. Had a private ghostly tour of the Queen Mary. Wow. Um, so, yeah, everything, everything is used, oh, wow. and everything and everyone. And that I'm. That's one of the best things about it. Wow. <laughs> is it that, that any? You know, keep your eyes open. Anything you see, anyone you meet, might be something, someone wonderful that will fit right into your fiction. Yeah. And now, how did you get involved with um, A Thousand and One Dark I, Nights? Can yes, uh, that? easy. Uh, a Thousand and One Dark Nights is the brainchild of Liz Berry and MJ Rose. They are both friends of mine, and I think they're two of the uh, hardest working, most brilliant women I know. And as soon as they asked me, I said yes. It was just, just you know, it's kind of like anything they ask, I'll Amazing. probably say yes. Yeah. yeah. No brainer. <laughs> and I love the concept. <laughs> now, Jessica, how? Yeah, oh yeah. Um, do you have any say uh, um, in like the the book cover or anything like any like uh, promo images or anything that goes with it? Do you or do you kind of just um, do about? I believe I have anyone? a say. Yes. Um, I work right now with um, people that usually come up with things I'm very happy with. And if there is a problem with something, in um, I say mm -hmm. it, they work very hard to fix whatever the problem may be. Um, uh, in, in that aspect, I think I'm, I wish I had it with me, I don't. <laughs> I have another cover that's coming out soon that I think is absolutely fantastic. Um, so I'm, I'm usually very pleased with what people are doing. I, I, do, um, I do have a say whether you know that nobody's ever going to have everything they do perfect every time they do it, but most of the time I'm very pleased. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, Bridget wants to know what kind of struggles do you face in writing? Is there anything that you know that you come across a lot, and how I do you overcome that? that? Um, <laughs> it's funny because I am doing rewrites right now, so you have this tendency, I think, with rewrites to. An editor will give you all these things, and you're kind of like, well, oh, that's, why, I don't understand how they didn't understand what I was saying. It's perfectly clear. And then, or, well, well why would that, why would that? And then you, you're kind of like, you walk around for a while thinking, oh, my God, they're just nitpicking. They're just doing things. 
And then you go back to it and you kind of figure like, okay, well, you know, if you didn't understand it, then wow, maybe nobody will. <laughs> and I should probably rewrite it. Um, and then, you know, then you do them and then you're happy. But I, I think sometimes the rewriting process is uh, possibly the hardest. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so Louisa has a question. Um, what advice would you offer someone who's trying to write their own romantic erotic novel? Is there anything specifically for that genre read, that you yeah. would recommend? Always read yeah. the best read of song. what's out there. The, I think one of the biggest mistakes I hear people mm -hmm. say is, oh my God, this is awful. I can write that. If it's awful, you don't want to write it. You want to write something that you are going to be happy with and very proud of. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, there's just nothing I can suggest more than find what you love, you know, what you want to be doing. Um, find several authors who are doing it well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, perhaps read the books once and then read them again for what is it that they're doing that so captivates you that you want to recreate in your own. Yeah. Now, speaking of, um, you know, just reading and getting into the habit of devouring books, what are you currently reading? Um, or are there a lot of titles I am on your reading, Right now, I'm reading a nonfiction um, that's really excellent. About, now, it's so good, I can't think of the name mm -hmm. of it, but it's uh, about Lincoln and his relationship with his generals and the generals' relationships with their cohorts in the South, which is a very interesting book. And I just bought something else too at the airport that I was going to dive into. And I believe that ah. it's a Preston and Child's book and I forgot the title. Ah, airport. I read, I read literally everything. Cool. Um, yeah, the airport is the perfect place to look, right? Uh, now, Kristen has an interesting question. Uh, she says, what advice would you give your 15 year old self? I'm not sure why specifically 15. But what advice would I give my 15 year old? <laughs> oh, my 15 year old self. Oh. Like you as a 15 year old. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, wow. A million times I could have said, don't do it. <laughs> it's a tough Don't a tough do it. And then I should have had a little <laughs> voice that whispered, take some game, business right? classes in my ear. <laughs> um, yeah, that would probably be it. <laughs> Learn more, learn more, be smarter. <laughs> now, um, Jared wants to know kind of where you get your ideas from, and he, he says you have a successful track record. Do you ever feel pressure to outdo um, each book? Luckily, I haven't, because I, 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 by the nature of the beast, sometimes you're going to finish something and love it more than something else. Um, and then I've seen books that I felt that I had had done a better job with that were not as popular as books that I was worried about. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I don't think I've ever tried to, right. um, I don't think of them as one upping or having to make sure um, that you're, I mean, I, right. I, I think the most important thing is that, you know, you really do your best to um, write the best book you can every time. And what I think keeps me going is, there is, there's always something new. Um, the next crew book that I'm working on, which will be out yeah. in 2016, summer of 2016, is based on a cruise that I just took. And um, nice. basically I'll say quickly, there's a serial killer who's been running around New Orleans oh. and they realize that he's landed on a cruise ship with a couple of thousand people on it, but they don't know who he is. So, and uh, But the character in it is oh. based from the fact that I became <laughs> a friend of mine and I became very friendly with the uh, piano bar host and uh, he was such a character I just I turned him into a uh, lovely young woman <laughs> and um, she will be there she will be the uh, protagonist of that story <laughs> cool so Jessica wants to know for when Irish eyes were haunting what was the um most challenging character in that particular mm. book to write about. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> I think the most challenging uh, was kind of a combo of characters because I really wanted to give them the feel of um, a, 
th that they were very real. And it's, you know, kind of, you know how when people are recessed mm -hmm. to past lives, most of the time you'll hear that somebody was the duchess of this or that or, mm -hmm. um, you know, lady so-and-so. And, -so. and it's kind of, you, you very seldom hear that, wow, I was a scullery maid and I lived this terribly boring life. But um, we, we do, the, the good majority yeah. of us go through life being um, certainly extraordinary in our own worlds, but, you know, ordinary as far as, no, we're not president of the United States, no, we're not mm -hmm. landing on the moon, no, we're not doing things like that. And I, I think I wanted the people who uh, lived and worked there on a day-to-day -day basis to be, um, to be very real. And, um, and I, as you had gone to a castle, um, I have been a couple of times to the uh, guest house mm -hmm. castles, and I've tried very much so to base it on people yeah. that I knew or had met. Cool. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, now, Jessica wants to know, what, what motivates you and continues to encourage you to write? I think it's just a love well, of writing. But no, I, I really do love to write. Else. But I honestly think, um, just, you know, like, knock on wood, thank mm -hmm. God, there's always something new. Um, I said the, this last one that really got me going was, was being on this cruise yes. ship. And I believe that after that, um, I, well, uh -huh. I had a husky for 17 years, or my daughter. Well, we had, we had a family husky for 17 years, and we just lost her. Uh -huh. And I loved that dog. So the next one, uh -huh. um, I wound up, because of the dog, Mm -hmm. <laughs> talking to a lot of people who actually raise huskies and who do Iditarods and live in Alaska and this type of thing. So I do believe that the crew will be going to Alaska when they're done with their lovely Caribbean cruise. <laughs> so that's, you know, there's, there's always something in life that's <laughs> going to pick up and intrigue you again. And, uh, and luckily we can find ways with fiction mm -hmm. to go in that direction. Yeah, that's a great answer. Now, last question. I'm just curious. Do you have any events coming up? Any book signings? Are you doing any conferences? Are you going anywhere in the next like month or so that oh, our thank fans, you. you know, I will be know in about? Homa, uh, Homa, Louisiana, quite soon for their Jambalaya Jubilee, and that's coming up in early. I think it's like mid mid April. That sounds uh, I'm awesome. not sure the exact date. And uh, I am going to mm -hmm. uh, Barbara Bay's Reader Appreciation Luncheon in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You took about two different places. <laughs> uh, yeah, Homa and Milwaukee, but uh, both lovely, filled with <laughs> lovely people. And then I think the next thing after that is Romantic Times. And I'm going to lose something here. I'm going to be at Creatures mm -hmm. and Crime or Crime and Creatures. This year I'm also going to be at Hot Mojave Nights. I'm trying to remember what else I will be at. Beyond a doubt, <laughs> I will be at Thriller Fest. And I think RWA is the weekend before that. So, yes, I'll be around. <laughs> I'll be around a lot of places. And hopefully, um, I think I have a listing of most of them up on the uh, right. the original Heather Graham right now. Original, the original Heather Graham dot com. Oh, great. Fantastic. See you have I a fun and then year of course, coming up. Of course, anybody who's in that Louisiana. Louisiana area or who just wants to come to New Orleans with a couple hundred of their best friends, um, please do look up writersforneworleans.com. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It was great chatting with you today, and thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. It was so lovely to have you. And I just want to remind everyone that we <clears throat> are giving away a mystery bag full of the author's favorite things. So stop by Book Trip after the chat and enter to win. Thank you so much. Have a great much. evening. Yeah. Bye. Take thank care. you. Bye, everybody. Boy, that was...